So with the explanation of the different Wiremock features, or at least the most common Wiremock features in the last lesson of the series, we'll now continue with the test setup for JUnit tests. So with our previous lessons, we did quite some manual effort here when it comes to starting and stopping the Wiremock server. So this would be actually copied over and over if we wouldn't outsource it to a different part of our application. And I will start now with showcasing how we can simplify the setup with JUnit 4. So even though JUnit 5 is released for quite some years already, there are still a lot of projects using JUnit 4. And that's why I think it's still valuable to see how such projects could simplify the setup. One thing to mention is that um, as recent versions of Spring Boot, the Spring Boot starter test already excludes the JUnit Vintage engine, which includes the sources for JUnit 4. Uh, we have to manually opt in in case we want to use JUnit 4 and JUnit 5 inside the same projects, which generally we shouldn't. I mean, once the migration is done, we should make sure to exclude all JUnit 4 references. But for this demo application, I'm actively opting in again to have access to JUnit 4. So for our JUnit 4 test, let's start again with the basics that are Spring Boot specific. So again, we need the Spring Boot test annotation to start a test context. We use a random port to also start Tomcat and not test against a mocked servlet environment. Then as we are back to JUnit 4, we need to register the Spring Runner again. Now setup wise, we are quite similar to our existing manual test setup. So again, we can inject here the web test client to then access our started Spring Boot application. And now for this setup, as we want to start only one Wiremock server for the entire test class, we can use a class rule of JUnit4 and then here specify the class rule. So this is here, Wiremock provides this class rule out of the box, so we don't have to add any additional uh, extension dependencies or something from a community that's already part of a JUnit. Then we can say here, Wiremock class rule and instantiate this rule. And then while creating here the instance, we can again configure our Wiremock to our needs. So let's do the basic configuration of a dynamic port. Uh, what's next is to again overwrite the base URL from our web client that is internally used to fetch data from this placeholder API. So again, we are using here this neat feature of Spring Test, the dynamic property source. And here we can inject the uh, registry. Then as part of the registry, override the to-do base URL. So that's similar to our previous test. So let's uh, do it here. But now we can ask the class rule for the base URL. Whereas with the manual test setup, we did it as part of the JUnit Jupyter, which is part of JUnit 5 uh, lifecycle method. So now this whole starting and stopping is taken care for us with this class rule. And then let's copy one sample test to make sure also the setup uh, works as expected. So here, copy the existing test. Now it's important to check for the add test annotation import. So by default, we copied here the test annotation from JUnit Jupyter, which would be JUnit 5, which we actually don't want for this test. So get rid of it and then import it again. And now as we have both JUnit 4 and JUnit 5 on the class path, IntelliJ in this example asks which import we want. And for this example, it's org.junit. As we are also back to JUnit 4, our tests have to be public. We can't use package private uh, access modifier here for our test. So that's why we have to make them public here. And we can now replace here the Wiremock server with the Wiremock class rule, and then uh, get access to this started uh, Wiremock, which will be started for us in the background for our entire test class. So if we run this now for the first time, let's take a look. So here the stubbing is quite basic, again, an empty body but we will see the test is becoming green. So again, at the start of our test, a lot of debug statements from Jetty 
So now we don't have to manually say start and stop. This is all taken care for us by this class rule. There's one final tweak or one final configuration setup we have to do in case we are having multiple tests inside this class. So let's take a look here, let's say two. And what I want to do here is to print out, similar to what we did before, all the stop mappings before our test runs. So let's say here, um, how did we call it? Stored stop mappings. I could have outsourced this to the lifecycle method, but that's that's fine here. Uh, let's uh, take a look how this looks like if we run the test again. So we'll see here the first test for sure doesn't have any recorded stop mappings because no test was run before this test. For the second test, we will see there is this start stop mapping from the previous test. So we are not yet starting with a, a clean state for Wiremock. And to fix this, we have to additionally define here a rule. So these rule then apply on the method level. And here we have to do a short trick. And here we can call it, for example, method rule and then reference our class rule. So it's a little bit hacky here. But if we don't do this, this YMO class rule wouldn't be uh, invoked uh, on each test method invocation and clean up the stubbings for us. So that's why we have to use here this workaround with this additional add rule, which applies to each test method of our test class. So if we uh, rerun the test again, we will now see at the beginning of each test an empty list. So all tests start with a clean state. And due to this small workaround here where we reference the class rule also for the uh, JUnit4 rule, all stubbing will be reset in the background for us. And also with the static class rule, Wiremock uh, will take care to shut down the server after the test. So we don't have to manually interfere here with the lifecycle of the server. So with this class rule in place, we saved now quite some boilerplate code and can reuse it for multiple tests. In case we would write, for example, a unit test for an HTTP client, we can also opt in to only use the Wiremock rule, uh, which creates a Wiremock server instance for each independent test method. But for our test setup, we really need uh, the static access to the Wiremock server because we have to overwrite a base URL prior to starting the spring context. And that's why for these tests, uh, the class rule is more sufficient. For more unit test level where we, for example, instantiate our HTTP client manually and pass the base URL to the constructor, we can also use the Wiremock rule. So class rule works on the test class level and uh, is triggered before and after uh, the entire test class. With the Wiremock rule, we are more down to before and after each test method but as already mentioned, not applicable for our test case, but in case you're testing some clients in isolation, you can also make use of this uh, JUnit4 uh, method rule.